Joshua Barney's story. It is 1812 and Joshua Barney is on his deathbed. To his daughter Mary, he recalls his military career in the War of 1812. Father, are you all right? I'm fine, Mary. But Father, you're dying. You must see the doctor. The doctors have done all they can do. But... Silence, daughter. I don't have much time. How did this happen? It all started in 1814 at the Battle of Cedar Point. I was the captain of a small flotilla named the Scorpion. We were in Baltimore receiving ship repairs and finding more men to join the flotilla. I was ordered by William Jones, the Secretary of the Navy, to protect the bay. I fought and pursued the St. Lawrence, a British ship. We left Baltimore and were heading towards the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. Captain! The British! We encountered the dragon, a British frigate. Fire! Fire! I had the scorpion turn around after a few shots. We retreated to the Patuxent River after seeing more British frigates. The next battle <coughs> was the Battle of St. Leonard's Creek on June 10th. 1814. After the British received reinforcements, I knew I had to retreat, or else the British would kill the flotilla. So I turned into St. Leonard's Creek. I knew my ships could fit, but the British Navy ships could not. Captain, our ships are too big for the creek. Get the barges ready. We're going to learn them out. When the barges were sent to get me out of the creek, I knew what they were trying to accomplish. I wasn't going to fall for it. I fought back and sunk one of the barges while the others returned to the main ship at the bottom of the creek. Get the man off land to attack the people to get them out of the creek! What happened next? How did you save the people? Well, there wasn't much I could do. If I fought back, my flotilla would be doomed. But they were expecting me to fight back, so what choice did I have? Set up those cannons! Fire! After hours of fighting, we finally broke up the British blockade, which left an opening in the mouth of the creek that I could leave my ships out of and find shelter elsewhere. We took shelter in the Patuxent River, east of Washington, D.C. Admirals Coburn and Cochran decided they were going to attack my fleet of gunboats and head to Washington, D.C. When the British arrived at our flotilla, I sent my men to join other land forces and militia. While well, a few of my men stayed to set the boats on fire. We retreated to DC to defend the road leading from Bladensburg to the capital. Most people thought Baltimore was going to be attacked. When the government realized the British were headed for DC, they made a military district around the capital, led by General William H. Winder. As the British started to come to Bladensburg, Winder didn't do anything to protect the capital. So the capital wasn't defended at all? Not entirely. My 400 sailors had joined forces with the local militia and regulars. Secretary of State Monroe had arrived with 5,000 militiamen. And before the British attacked, General Winder had arrived and taken command. Compared to the British, we looked quite strong, even to General Ross, who was leading them to D.C. What we lacked were regular troops. When the British attacked the bridge that we were defending, our militia only stayed to fight for a little while. The only men to stay and fight were my sailors and I. Retreat! Retreat! By retreating, we left Washington, D.C. open to attack. The British not only burnt the White House, they burnt the Capitol, the Treasury, the War Office, and seized a lot of ammunition. We lost 26 men in total before we retreated that day. And the fools later called it a disgrace. Perhaps it was. No, Father. What you did was patriotic and brave. You sold the British down on the way to Washington, D.C. 
You gave Baltimore more time to prepare for the attacks. You turned on St. Leonard's Creek knowing the British could not follow you. You and your men fought until they could no longer fight. What you did took cleverness, bravery, and military brilliance. Joshua Horney died December 1st, 1818. He was a Revolutionary War hero and naval commander in the War of 1812. His podcast is dedicated to his service.